Hey there, Adam the Tank Guy here, and today I'm with Lee from Event Office and also Inflatable Office. Hi, Lee. Oh, what's going on, man? And I'm much just trying to trying to stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as we said, Event Office, Inflatable Office. We're kind of going to more focus on Event Office today. Why don't you give an introduction and a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I uh, I actually have a little bit of a background in the event industry. I used to be one of the laborers mainly, uh, just uh, loading trucks, setting up events. So did that while um, high school and college and, you know, bounced around, had sales jobs um, most of my life and uh, ended up working here. So I've already got a little bit of the background experience, but um, I love the event industry. There's nobody else like it uh, as far as the guys that work in the event industry. It's uh, it's unique compared to everything else I've worked in. So I really like my customer base and I have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it is unique. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people mess around and, uh, you know, it's good. It's good, relaxed cultures. Yeah. But two of the trade shows I've been for the event and tent industry specifically have both had alcohol on the trade show floor. So I'm never going to oh. complain about that. So <laughs> nice. nice. All right. So why don't we just get into like what event office is, what it does. Um, and then I'm going to add it to the screen in a second, but why don't you just give a basic overview? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, obviously, you know, we're a cloud-based, uh, rental management software. Um, really what we try to focus on and kind of be different, uh, from the rest of the industry with is trying to be just a really focused all-in-one solution. So we have a lot of products to carry, um, to cover, a lot of different sides of your business. Um, we're also very sales focused. Um, so any half decent software should be able to, you know, manage the logistics of your business. We want to also grow with you and really focus on those sales numbers. So that's kind of what we're all about. Right. Cool. All right, I'm going to add your screen and then cool. you, can, you can kind of just give us, you don't have to go into too much detail, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, give us an overview, what it does, what it shows. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of the main products we offer are, you know, obviously you have to cover um, just the back office side of your business. So that comes to reporting, uh, managing your whole sales process as far as leads, you know, people calling in, booking their events, uh, figuring out the logistics, packing process, um, availability. So that's sort of baseline stuff. Where we take it a little further is we also have some other products here like a dedicated built-in CRM uh, where I'm able to go in and see you know every piece of correspondence, phone call, email, uh, customer activity. We also have a built-in phone system as well, which you can see at the top of the screen. So you can actually run a cloud-based phone system for your entire company. Um, we have a lot of web integration stuff uh, to do online booking, or quoting if you're more just comfortable with just doing the kind of quoting wish list process. Uh, and we also have worker management tools to where I can track, you know, all of my employees here, be able to do their payroll, uh, let them have a separate login to where they can see where they need to be, uh, do surveys, training, you know, some safety features like that. So really just trying to touch on all aspects of your business, really. Yeah. Right. That's cool. I see that guy's name is Lazy Joe. Yes. <laughs> Every company's got one. I wish it wasn't true, but <laughs> I've right. probably been lazy Joe at some point. So uh, the phone can be integrated. And so you can see when someone called and obviously it's not going to like voice the text, the conversation, but you would just go in and add notes of what the conversation was. Yeah, we're working on call recording. That's coming. Um, so it, it's a cloud-based phone system, basically, where you can have a phone number that you can port one in if you want. Then at that point, um, you're able to set up a call schedule. So like I work remotely all the time. Um, I take all my calls. Everybody at our company takes their calls through their personal cell phone. Uh, as far as what you're asking about, though, <clears throat> when I'm on a lead here, lead event, whatever you want to call it, uh, down in the CRM, I'll actually be able to see phone records like place call, received call. Um, this would show me what employee fielded that call, how long it was. Um, we can do transcriptions of voicemails and you can also text your customers through this platform as well. So. Okay, that's that's cool. I like that. Uh, so is email also integrated into this? Yeah, email is 100% integrated. Um, so if, if you're using the CRM, uh, it's going to be able to track all incoming and outgoing emails. Since we're dipping into your email server, though, if you had an email from a customer like a few years back, we would actually scan that and it would be able to show up here. So you could view the history and I can see exactly what was said to somebody. Um, but yeah, as far as emailing customers, <clears throat> pretty easy to do. Um, 
So I can select from a number of templates on here saying, you know, we're going to go ahead and send you out a quote. I could bring up my template for that email. Um, and this is going to auto fill with whatever I had that template as. Um, I also have the whole, you know, marketing emails, uh, automated administrative stuff like, thanks for making a payment. Thanks for signing your contract. That can all be set up as well. Cool. Uh, still on emails. One quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you close an order, it came back, everything's good or whatever, and you close it, however you close it, um, does it automatically send an email to the customer? Or Yeah. So the one thing about our software that we kind of pride ourselves on and really try to embrace is we're not cookie cutter. Um, we're going to do whatever you want us to. So what you would be talking about would kind of be like a thank you email, which yeah. we have a default template in here. Um, but this is just an idea of what it could look like. Um, so basically if you can work a, a word editor, you could create an email in here and it's just going to fill in, you know, certain variables with customer information. Uh, if you want to really uh, kind of blow this feature up, everything in our software can be broken down to a code view which means I could edit this email based off of just HTML and CSS. So you can make some really cool templates here as well. So that's cool. All right. Yeah. Sweet. All right. You want to maybe just make a fake order? Yeah. Or something? Absolutely. <clears throat> so we'll go over to my uh, leads and events page here and I'll just say I'm adding a new one. Uh, sometimes I find it helpful. I mean, Adam, what's your, what's your usual sales process look like? Are you usually just saying starting off with, you know, availability or kind of probing the customer as far as what they're looking for? Uh, yeah. So date, they need it and then, mm -hmm. uh, get all their information and then what they want and then send them a quote. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, right off the bat, we're going to make sure we've got their event time correct. So in this case, we're just booking a, an event for the 10th for, um, 3 PM to 6 PM here. So I'll go in. The minute I've set that event time, it's then giving me live availability of everything in my inventory right here in this window. Um, okay. So I can search uh, by the word if I wanted, if I just wanted to type in the word tent, it's going to show me everything there. I can see I've got seven of my 10 by 10s available. I can go ahead and click add uh, that on the order there, or I can browse by category. So I could just say, hey, we're actually looking for anything in table decor. And I could add on some uh, green strands here and we could give that a quantity. Um, for vendor items, or maybe, you know, you're a company that offers custom services, and this might be something you've never done before. Um, I could type in literally anything, and I could say, hey, maybe this is something you know you're gonna sub rent out for the first time, or you're just gonna quick add it in there. Maybe you guys do like custom creative services. I can just add this on there and assign a price to it um, right away for the customer, even if it's something I didn't have in my database already. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I like that. My current program, we just have this line that says change name here. Mm -hmm. and we, we have to add that every time and then mm -hmm. change the name to whatever. But this is cool. You can just immediately add anything. Absolutely. So it just makes it really good for stuff on the fly. Um, and when I want to have to go in and create a whole new item when I'm just trying to get somebody a quote really quickly. So, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it, you know, with these items, I'm obviously going to be able to set custom times if I need to saying, Hey, you know, the tent's actually only going to be operational for a certain amount of time during the event. Or if I just wanted to throw some notes on each individual item so the customer could see that, or if it's something on my end, you know, totally however you want to use it there. Right. Nice. So after I've got, you know, some inventory on there, I can really go in whatever order I want. Um, we've got a fluid one page design here. So <clears throat> There's, you know, you're not having to dip into different windows or sections. Everything's right here on the same page. And you can see it's organized on this sidebar. But we could just start grabbing some customer information. And I could say, uh, this is actually going to be for, I could type in whatever name I want here. And that's going to be able to search my customer database in real time. And I could say, you know what? I've actually already worked with this guy before. So I'll plug in his information. And <clears throat> once I've done that, I will have any customer notes that we had on them before are going to populate there. Um, and then I can start gathering venue information. If he's just having it at his house, I could just hit this button just to say, Hey, take the address from the customer, pop it right over to the venue. Or we could see if maybe we've worked at this venue before. Um, this event called first glance. There we go. I've already got the details on it. Um, and I can look and see right here on my venue notes. If I've already worked there before, it's going to carry those notes over from before. So, okay. Um, the note fields, you can add as many of these as you want. These are just kind of the default ones on there. So you can make as many note fields as you want. Those can appear 
wherever you want. Um, with everything in our software, you're going to kind of see we're just, like I said, we're trying not to be cookie cutter. Every company is different. I mean, you know, pretty much most companies are renting out the same inventory. It's how you run your business that's made you successful. So we don't want to come in with like a sledgehammer and bust those processes up. We want to allow you to do things the way you want to do them. So, right. Um, so how would you handle something like a 40 by 100 where you don't necessarily need, need the customer to see two ends and three mids? Um, you just want them to see 40 by 100, but you want your computer to track that your 40 by 100 is out. You're not going to send out a 40 by 80. The computer is not going to think the 40 by 80 is available because it's obviously within that 40 by 100. Yes, absolutely. So um, there's actually two things with that that would kind of be happening. Um, the first off is what we would call a parent child item. Um, so an example of this, I know there might be a lot of tent guys out there watching, but I already have one set up that let's just say it's an inflatable obstacle course, or you know what? I'm sorry. I actually do think I have, no, I do have a tent set up for this. Yeah. So a 20 by 20 tent, as an example, um, when I'm on this item page right here, I can look at what we call the relationships for this item. And all it's doing is saying, Hey, here's some children item for this 20 by 20. And here's basically what it's comprised of. And this is, you know, if the smaller variations are able to be rented out by themselves, like a 10 by 10, it can say, Hey, we actually need four of this totally different item in order to build it. So that way these 10 by 10s can be rented out by themselves, but the system knows we need four of those available uh, in order to make this larger piece. Now, to break it down more so, if you really want to get technical and if the customer wants to put in the work of, you know, loading in these pieces, you could go down to every single pole, corner, support piece, stake, and you could list out all of the required items to build absolutely anything. Um, and that way, you know, the system is going to be doing all the work as far as configuration and figuring out availability. So, right. Good. Okay. I, and I, that's a great feature, but I just, I'm realistic with the guys when they're setting up, like, listen, <laughs> this, this might be a little more work than, uh, than you're signing up for. So a lot of times it's kind of like a long haul, like, okay, over time we'll get it all set up because there's a lot of pieces sitting around in that warehouse, man. And to track all of them can be a big progress test. So, yeah, yeah I, it's kind of worth it. Cause on a busy weekend, you may not have all the stakes you need and it's like mm -hmm. good, good to know that you don't have a certain number of stakes uh that you're either gonna have to buy or figure something out so yeah it is it is good to do and once you do it it's easy to like keep it updated absolutely and yeah, most of the time with software it's it's always the the investment of like time to pay a reward payoff is a really good ratio it's like you know a little work here like a couple hours setting up a software can save you thousands of hours when you're you know running around with your head cut off in the middle of the summer so yeah. right so say you got a tent in there with the stakes and the poles and mm -hmm. the ropes and anything else that needs to build it. Uh, does the customer see that stuff? Because a lot of times they'd be confused or annoyed. As it, can you just show them the 20 by 20 and not all the stakes and poles? Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to be able 100% to differentiate what the customer needs to see um, and what they shouldn't see. Because there might be a lot of accessories on here that I want them to see. Um, as you know, add-ons, or maybe if they're on my website and they're going through the process of you know creating a quote or trying to book something online that you want to show them, like, hey, here's some sidewalls you can have on here. Here's clear sidewalls. Here's lights for your tent. Those are the type of accessories you would want to show up. Um, but you know, other things we're going to be able to say this is hidden, or maybe it only needs to show up in a contract. We can be very particular with that stuff. Yeah. Cool. So this is all cloud-based. So I'm assuming if I'm out on the road and I get a phone call, I can make a quote or an order right from my phone or iPad or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a mobile application. We're actually launching a whole new one this year as well. Um, that's going to be geared towards just the guys on the field, uh, the guys doing delivery. But if you can see on the screen share, our whole software, um, it's totally adaptive to the size of your screen. So this will work just fine on a mobile device, desktop, computer, whatever you're on there. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It's uh, for a lot of guys just starting out. It's like you're on the road taking phone calls and setting up. And one of the big things is you want to be able to get back to the customer like immediately. Otherwise, they're going to call someone else. So this this is cool. Yeah, a lot of the old softwares were definitely designed with like an enterprise company in mind. So if you've got a whole office staff and people sitting in chairs all day, it's a great software. But the minute you try to take it like, you know, iPad on the field ain't going to happen. So, yeah. Right. So uh, 
So why don't, why don't you like maybe pretend to email this to someone and mm -hmm. just how, how's that all work? Yeah. So um, when I'm emailing out a lead to somebody, we'll just go to one that's already created um, just because there's a few things we didn't fill out on there, but I'm going to go to Joe Petty's lead. So if it was time to email this out to him, all I'm going to do is hit the email button and I'm going to select uh, the template of the email that I'm going to send out to him. So right now I'm sending him the quote. So I'll select that. And again, what's populating here, that's just a template that you have control over. Right. What we're concerned with here is that we're sending this link out because the way we work is, you know, we're not just sending them out like a dead document or a PDF. We're sending them out a live link that could actually be on your website with your web address. Um, so every time they call back in and adjust this, this is going to be live for them to where they can see the changes, um, everything that's going on. And I don't have to keep sending out a link over and over and over again. Uh, and they can see discounts. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I just want to bring attention to something that kind of goes back to what I was saying about trying not to be cookie cutter for everybody. Um, my pages and templates. Okay. So what we're looking at, this is just a, a template called quote confirm. So the exact page that we're looking at here is just a template that I can change at any point in time. So if you see something here, you say, I don't like, or I think I could improve this or reorganize it. Totally doable. You don't have to be a web developer. Our support team could help you out. So very cool. Yeah, because I, in my current rental program, it would automatically give me a delivery day, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I'm making orders six months a, mo a year in advance for weddings, and the people would be like, "No, we can't have it delivered at that time." And I was like, "I don't want this." Um, it was this whole process to get it changed. Uh, yeah, kind of crazy. I just wanted it to be blank. I only wanted the day uh -huh. of their event to show up, and above it just to say delivery is anywhere from one to three days before. I didn't want a specific date and time a year in advance because I'm trying to do like a, a route yeah. for my deliveries. So yeah, that was kind of a pain to change. But you're yeah, saying you can you change. You don't feel like it's a big request, but they somehow make you feel like it's a big request just when you're trying to do something tiny like that. Right. Yeah. Now that can all be changed. And, and then, you know, when it comes down to the actual process of going through and letting that person know like, hey, what day are we actually delivering? That could be covered in an email um, of something that would fall under like an event reminder saying, hey, you know, three days before this event, I want to send them out an email that tells them how much they owe, what time I'm going to be there. If you want to say that, all that stuff can be covered without you having to remember to do that follow up. Sounds good. While we're on this right here mm -hmm. um, and you said that you know, they don't, you don't need to send them a new PDF every time. Yeah. They can just go into the same link. Absolutely. Um, can they also click on something to sign and pay? Yeah. So this is um, really where uh, you get to have control over your sales process. So if I go to my online quoting settings, I can adjust <clears throat> whether or not I want people to be able to book events after I've sent them a quote or if I want them to have to go through me and I can put a number of parameters on there. One of them saying like, Hey, I'm okay with people booking online for certain items, but if it's anything larger than a 40 by 40, I want them to have to call me to complete that. Or I could say, you know, I'm okay with people booking online as long as that event's at least five days away. So I can put those kind of parameters on there. Um, but let's say we did have it turned on to where once you initiated a quote for somebody, you okay? You were okay with them booking that. And that's the way you have it set up. That's fine. All they're going to need to do is click on the book this event link. And that's going to go ahead and take them straight over to the last step of the process where they're going to see your contract. Again, template. Um, they can go ahead and sign off on it digitally. So we'll put in a signature a name here. And that's going to input uh, their signature along with the date, the IP address, everything right down here at the bottom. And then you can offer whatever payment options you want. Uh, if you're doing credit, we work with at least nine different companies uh, for credit card processing. So we're not owned by a credit card company. We don't force you to use one. You pretty much have your pick of the litter uh, and they just enter their credit card information right here. That goes along a secure connection right to the company and you can set whatever dollar amount you want to collect here, whether it be a flat rate, percentage, whatever. Okay, so then say their event comes back up. Do you, how do they know to pay again? Uh, is it automatic, or do you send it out, or? Yeah, so it it all depends. I mean, if you're the type of company that you know, if you're working with 
like a large corporation you've done business with forever and you just have like a PO system with them. Uh, if you collect payments on the spot, you can do that within our app. You can remind them through an automated email that, you know, it's time to pay again. And you would give them a link right back to this page here where they could issue another payment and it'll actually track the history of their payments right here. Um, or, you know, depending on which process you're using, we've got different features with each company. Uh, one of the companies we work with, we do have an auto pay feature where you can say, hey, I'm going to pay you the 574 right now. And then on another day, you're authorized to take out the remainder and that can happen automatically for you. All right. That's cool. Um, I have a question on like notifications for the office staff or yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, can, does the system like automatically notify you? Like say you want to set a reminder to look at this at a certain time or set up some sort of automatic thing to review the quote and see if they need to follow up or something. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I would kind of judge, I mean, so here's the interesting thing about our company is I actually use the software to sell the software. Okay. So I kind of have like real world experience in it. Um, usually it's going to depend on how urgent or important that thing is that I'm trying to remind myself of. Um, if it's kind of a one-off case and it's something really important, what I'll do is using our CRM, I will actually make a new task for myself. So you can type in what the task is, uh, the date and time that it needs taken care of. And then you can select how you want it to remind you. Like, do you want to create, like for you, you know, we were doing this call today. So I had you on my calendar and I made a task and said, okay, put this on my calendar, block out my time. I can have it email me. Um, I'll assign it to, you know, myself. And then I can sign, save that task there. Um, if this is more just sort of like routine follow-up that you're doing on all of your events, uh, what I would do is I would have a filter created for that. And filters can be specific to employees, but basically it's going to generate a list of everything that needs my attention. And that's something I would work off of every day. Like I have sales filters set up and it pretty much guides my entire process and saying, this is everybody you need to reach out today. All right, cool. <clears throat> yeah, uh, reminders are, are good because uh, you send out a quote and then you send out 50 other ones and you uh, forget to, you know, who you sent them out with. So if your computer program yeah. can keep track of it, that's cool. That's, I mean, that's a perfect example of a filter is I would basically go in and say, show me everything that's in the quote status. And if it's tied up to your email and your phone, you can say, show me everything that's in the quote status, but that I haven't talked to in at least three days. So then it's kind of making sure you're not contacting people too often. If you want to drill it down a step further, our CRM, um, I'll show you this, can actually track. So when I go to this person's customer profile, we're actually tracking everything they're doing as far as when they viewed the contract, if they opened an email, did they get back on your website? This can tell me the difference between a quote that's very likely they're trying to book soon or somebody who is maybe just kicking the tires and hasn't even given me a second thought. So you can actually prioritize your sales process. Right. Cool. Oh, I had a follow up to. So when they go in and click that link and see their quote, uh, what if all of a sudden someone else got quotes and booked things and there's no longer those tables available? Uh, are they going to be able to book it if you have it set up automatically? I know if they have to call you, you, you know, you'll see that. But if it's an automatic like they can book it, what happens there? Yeah, that no, they're not going to be able to. Um, and that kind of goes into a few different things of when you want to show availability. So for example, like when I'm on, um, let me pop over to a demo site real quick. When I'm on, you know, a company's website, and I'm looking at their inventory, and I'm taking a look at their tents here. Um, I can actually see based off of the day and time that I've selected, maybe if something's available. And that's kind of up to the company of whether or not they want to disclose that information to their customers. Because I work with some companies that say, hey, I want to make sure my customers know the minute they see that item that it's not available because I don't want to get their hopes up. Or I work with companies that have got like some real true blue salesmen who say, you know what? I don't need to tell them this item isn't available right now. I want to at least take the request. And then if it's not available, we can try to figure out an alternative solution to them. So we could let them get the quote. Um, but when they go ahead and, you know, try to hit book this event, it's actually going to give them a message that says, Hey, you know, we're going to need to give you a call about this for one reason or another. We're going to reach out to you. Okay, good. So the customer can't take things that you don't have. 
and leave, exactly. you out of, leave you out of control. Yeah, unless you, for some reason, you are manually overriding. You say, hey, I know I can get these items. I'm okaying it. If you have the permissions, you know, if you were like a manager, because um, each, each login has got their own permissions here, a long list of saying what they can and can't do. So if you had the permissions to do an override like that, absolutely. But no, the customer is never outside of what you want them doing. Okay, cool. So we were on your website and you said it like integrates into your website. Like, how's that work? Like you guys, someone can make a website using your system? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we do have an open API for people who want to do a more technical setup. Um, but, but the most common solution is you can install our WordPress plugin or we actually offer web design services as well. Um, so if you had the WordPress plugin running on a site, uh, you know, all of the contact forms, instead of that just being an email where you're kind of doing double entry, that would actually show up as a lead in the system. Um, this is also going to help you with inventory management. So when you go out and buy a new item or your inventory changes, as long as it's in our software, it's going to show up in real time on the site there. Um, so you're not having to run some kind of wonky, you know, software proprietary website. This is a regular site just running a plugin. Um, it's really going to help your booking process. It's going to be a lot smoother to where customers can go in here. They can basically pick a date and time. And again, you know, this doesn't have to be online booking. This could be just taking the request and we could gather just their name from them here. We'll get uh, organization an email and we could grab their phone number. And what's really cool here is the minute they hit this next button, that's submitting the info to you. So if you want to ask some more kind of digging questions here to get an idea of what their price is going to be or just some things you'd like to know off the bat, um, we're still going to have their contact details if they leave the page at this point. So, Okay, cool. Um, and as far as workers goes, um, there's a lot of programs out there when I work, uh, other companies like that that are helping you do that. We're trying to give everybody an integrated solution because we realize those companies have really great software, but no matter how good they are, um, nothing's ever really going to compare to something that's just all in the one place. Uh, where you don't have to jump around from platform to platform. So, you know, we have the ability where you can schedule your employees uh, direct from the software. They can get notifications. They've got a completely separate site that they're going to be able to log into uh, to where they can see all the details on their shift. They can clock in, clock out, um, and you're going to be able to do your payroll through here. Another cool thing is when they're done with the shift, um, they could actually fill out a quick survey for you, just letting you know how it went. Uh, did anybody get hurt? Did you leave anything there? So we're just trying to provide everything you could possibly need all in one package there. And then if you're working with a payroll company, this gets sent off to them or? Yeah, so we have integration with a couple of payroll companies or, um, I mean, one of the other basic ways to do it is we can just export it uh, into a spreadsheet for you and you can you know, take that data however you want. So I can select a time range that I'm trying to get my payroll for. Um, it's gonna generate this and then I can actually export this and put it into whatever kind of format my payroll company is working with, yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I forgot what I was going to ask. You, you basically had three things. Uh, let's see. The website, the... Yeah, we went over the website, the CRM, the workers. Um, that's that's pretty much, I mean, most of the important stuff. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's, you know, there's a thousand bells and whistles like weather alerts and blah, blah, blah. But that's a pretty good overview for the most part. So, right. All right. I'm going to take that down. We're back here. So right now we're talking to you about event office, but you guys also run inflatable office and I'm guessing they're kind of similar. Yeah. Um, the companies are going to start to be, as far as the software goes, they're going to start to differentiate themselves more in the future. Um, right now they're going to contain most of the same features. Uh, the biggest difference between them currently is just the pricing models. So usually, you know, your run of the mill event company who's dealing maybe in smaller items could have like somewhere, you know, upwards of 800 different items at any given time. So we're doing those uh, plans based off of how many employees you have versus an inflatable company uh, being larger units might have a lower item count um, and not as many employees. So we're charging them based off of per items in that case. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. But um, they basically do the same thing, the website integration and all the other Yeah, stuff. We, we try to offer all the features across the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. And uh, 
I definitely know that people who have inflatables, they do let people book online like a lot because it's basically like you're just ordering an inflatable, maybe some tables and chairs a lot of times. It's not as complicated as a wedding. Yeah, a, a wedding and just tents in general, man. I mean, so often customers, you know, come to you for a 20 by 20 and they're like, yeah, I think I could fit about 300 people in there. You're like, right, oh, right. It's not going to work. And then somehow it ends up being your fault because they booked a tent too small. And yeah, so there's just a lot more planning on that side of the industry. Yeah, yeah. That's why you don't want them to be able to automatically be able to book a tent because they have no idea what's going to fit under there. And then, like you said, it's my fault. Yeah. And you're usually dealing with higher stress clients. You know, it's usually a corporation or a big university event or, I mean, brides are a league of their own. So yeah. Right. Awesome. Is there, is there anything else you want to touch on? Uh, no, I mean, that's it. I just encourage everybody. Uh, if you're looking for software, um, look at as many companies as you can because switching is a, it's a nightmare. It's a pain <laughs> and it's not something um, I or anyone else likes doing. So make sure you're doing your homework, focus on something that, you know, Anybody should be able to manage your company. You want somebody that's going to be able to really make you money long term. Um, and if you're not using software, start up as soon as possible. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if you don't use software, you're going to end up overbooking or messing up dates or whatever. Yeah. And, and I've seen people hold together forever, man. And they they just hold out and hold out and hold out. But the minute they do, they're like, I should have done this 15 years ago. Right. It makes everything yeah. go so much faster. Yeah. Easier. Absolutely. Now, do you do? Um, do you do demos and whatever like online with someone or? Yeah. And actually what's cool, our software, um, I don't know, might not be a good move sales wise. It's totally accessible for anybody. We've got the demo account, uh, all the time is accessible. Um, so anybody who just fills out a form can access the demo account I was playing around in. It's totally functional. We do, uh, 30 day free trials. I stretch those out all the time though, just because the cost of software, I really like to make sure somebody's comfortable with it, um, and really set on it before they start paying. So we're flexible. Um, we're a smaller company and, uh, you can sign up for a free account, no credit card or anything required. So, yeah. Okay. That's cool. I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most, most places you can get a free trial. I like that yours is 30 days. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone else is only 15. I think 15 is too, or 14 is too low to try I mean, to get it's pretty much saying you're going to pay us before you even figure out if this is working. Um, right. So that's why a lot of times, a lot of times with people like, I mean, I think honestly with larger companies, a trial needs to be like 90 days or so. So I'll be like, listen, you know, if you can at least give us some sort of down payment or anything, you know, we can do the importing of your data. We can help you get set up. We just want a little bit of assurance that you're planning on trying to use it. Um, but yeah, it takes so long to really figure out. I mean, I've seen customers change their mind after being with us for six months. So you never really know. So, right. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, you can stop on our website, uh, eventoffice.io. There's a contact form on there, our phone number, or just um, sales at eventoffice.io. Uh, we've got Facebook groups, our support site, any way you want. You can text our phone number too. I respond to those as well. So yeah. Okay, good. That's cool. I'll put uh, the website and your email address awesome. down in the description. Cool. It was good having you on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Adam. I'll catch you later, man. All right, have a good day.